It's Max, and we're back. And I knew I said I wasn't going to do a video, but I don't feel like plowing. Snow is lightening up a little bit, so I'll do a quick one. While I've been uh, bumming around here, I watched... Uh, Brian's got a new video, God the Father is the Soul of the Godhead. Now, I saw this, saw something like this uh, like a year ago. He started getting into this, where he's very insistent that... God the Father is the soul of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is the is the spirit of Jesus, and you call that modalism. And his contention is is that well, he's not a modalist because he believes that uh, the spirit, the soul, God the Father can separate from Jesus, and the Holy Spirit can separate here and there. And I think this misunderstanding comes from this idea of body, soul, and spirit. And it says we were created in the image of God back in Genesis. Yes. Does that necessarily mean body, soul, and spirit? That that's what the image of God is referring to? Where where you get this stuff, Brian? Um, I don't understand this obsession with making everything a view it my way or you're wrong thing. And he's got quite a few things like that. And we'll, I'm going to play a couple of minutes of this, and we'll talk about it. But I think that is the crux of the whole thing. I'm your classic uh, three-in-one, um, the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, uh, God the Father, and the Son are three separate persons. And that's the persons may not be the best word to use, but they have their own distinctions. And when they say that they're one is that they are one in, um, like, mindset, one in the way that they do things. That is how I understand that. And, of course, Jesus sitting on the right hand of God and them having conversations and the Holy Ghost coming down upon Jesus and his baptism, uh, God the Father saying, This is my Son and with whom my soul is well pleased. And Brian equates a lot of this where God talks about, God the Father talks about his soul. He says, my soul. He doesn't refer to say that he is the soul. So, you, you, if you use this doctrine, you go through the Bible, none of it would make sense then. And he'll back it up and he'll say, well, the mystery of godliness, mystery of godliness, mystery of godliness. I don't like talking about, you know, oh, the Trinitarian doctrine. Now I'm, I'm a lost person now because I use the word Trinity. Because mystery of godliness is great. It says there's three in one. There we go. His contention is that all, all of those parts make up Jesus. And he has this soul, body, and spirit mentality to it. And it's like, I'm pretty sure Moses on Mount Sinai was speaking with God the Father. So, um, hmm. Anyways, we'll listen to him for a couple of minutes here. Behold my servant, Jesus, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. God the Father, the soul is well pleased. But God the Father I is the one my... speaking, right? My soul. It's not Jesus saying, my soul is well pleased. You talking to himself? My spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Jesus is the body. God the Father is the soul. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. And he repeats this over right and there. over and over again. But where do you get that you from a, the Bible? A real good proof text for the Godhead, the biblical Godhead. You're looking at it right there. Matthew chapter 12, verse 18. My beloved, my chosen, Jesus. My soul, God the Father, my spirit, the Holy Ghost. Three in one. Right. So Jesus is the only oh, no. Jesus then is the only God. But that's modalism. We'll look at the definition of modalism, and this is going to be the same thing I think that Brian used for his other thing. And let me say this. If you have to come out with videos saying that you're not a racist, and you have to come out with videos saying you're not a modalist. Uh, chances are you're a racist and a modalist. 
Modalism, also called Sabalianism, is an unorthodox belief that God is one person who has revealed himself in three forms or modes in contrast to the Trinitarian doctrine where God is one being eternally existing in three persons. According to modalism, during the Incarnation, Jesus was simply God acting in one mode or role. This is exactly what he's saying. This is exactly what Brian is saying. And the Holy Spirit at Pentecost was God acting in a different mode. Thus, God does not exist as Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit at the same time. Rather, he is one person and has merely manifested himself in these three modes at various times. Now, Brian doesn't take that position where they're only existing one at a time. He says that they can separate, but he's also effectively saying that they're all just Jesus. Modalism thus denies the basic distinctiveness and coexistence of three persons of the Trinity. Oh, can't use Trinity, man. Can't use Trinity. Not in the Bible. You got to question your salvation. And Brian actually says that. That's what he says. No, it's just, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a, a another God there. You know, you have three gods and, and two gods are, well, one God is in heaven. The other's kind of in between there. The God, the bird there, you know. And uh, the third God down there, he's Jesus Christ, God the Son. No, it's a one God composed of body, soul, spirit. That's what the Bible teaches. It's not God in three persons. There's no scripture for that. It's definitely not Trinity. Anybody that clings to that word is lost. I'm telling you right now. I mean, is there anybody it, who's not I lost think... except Brian Denlinger? Is there, is, is, is there anybody on the planet who is not lost except Brian Denlinger. Do we need to pray on Brian Denlinger uh, to go to heaven? Hmm? We have to have faith in Brian? Hmm? You know, with the Bible, there's a lot of things that you don't understand. And you use words to for ideas about what the Bible talks about because the Bible uses different terminology all throughout thousands of years of writing and when you see the same thing, the same thing referred to, um, for instance, like the rapture, that you see it all over the place in the Bible, but it doesn't have a defined term, that is what you call it. We're going to use rapture. Then everyone knows what you're talking about, okay? We talk about the Godhead. We use the term Trinity. Is it a Catholic term? I, I don't know. People know what you're talking about, though. People know what you're talking about. So... My question is, if, if God the Father is God the Son and is also the Holy Ghost, and they're all in Jesus, so Jesus is the main God, number one, who is he talking to um, in heaven? And is he splitting his soul off, um, the Holy Ghost off from himself to descend upon him when he was baptized? And, huh? He's, he's splitting himself apart like that? Hmm? Used it in the past. A lot of great men of God have used it, right? But when you pin them right down, if they're teaching this Catholic Trinity stuff and there's, and they, I'll defend the Trinity, well, then you're just like a Catholic, all right? I mean, it's an indefensible position. It's just insane. I will defend the Trinity. It's not a Bible word. And the not whole concept, you, you study Catholicism, you study what they're teaching, their whole concept is far into the pages of Scripture. It's a pagan idol. Well, the way that the Catholics have it set up, yes. Because they make statues of them and all that stuff, and you're not supposed to uh, make graven images of anything in heaven. Yeah. But it's just a word, Brian. It's just a word. You use rapture all the time. And not very long ago, you were using Trinity and persons. But now apparently you had this great revelation that no one else other than modalists have, that Jesus is all three gods. Or all of the aspects of God, all in, all in one, which more or less he is, but splitting himself off and talking to himself. Well, let's continue. Matthew chapter 26. 
Matthew chapter 26, verse 38 through 39. Okay, it says here, verse 38, Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Yeah, so who's he talking to then? He's talking to God the Father. Hmm? You see, here's where you get these huge problems now is that in the old testament it's primary it's mostly god the father and you can make a case for a pre-incarnate jesus um, as melchizedek and some other areas in there i mean that's all speculation on a lot of that stuff um, that was because he was a he was both a, a preacher or a pastor and a king which is one of the qualities of jesus but it's god the father in the old testament and now you may as well just say Jesus. Anytime God the Father says anything, well, it's Jesus then. Which isn't what the book says. And he's got this body, soul, spirit thing. So ingrained to his head, like, God is a reflection of us or something? I mean, yeah, we're made in God's image. But does that mean body, soul, and spirit? I mean... When they're up talking in heaven, Jesus is the word. Did he have a body then? Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, I'll always refer back to 1 John 5, 7. There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Uh, yeah. And there's also this thing about blaspheming the Holy Ghost as being the only way that you're, you know, sure to go to hell regardless of anything, and no one really knows what that means. Blaspheming the Spirit of God? I don't know. No one's, no one's had a good answer for that. I think Brian says, well, if you blaspheme Jesus because the Holy Spirit is physically with him, with him or something, you go to hell. I don't know. That's what he says. It says three. doesn't say one guy. I don't know. So, and I'm not aware of anybody who agrees with his position on this. Um, I mean, it, it looks like modalism to me. But he says, oh, no, but Jesus can split off. He can split off and then call himself the Father. Uh, hmm? So I guess Jesus split again at Pentecost. See, that's modalism. It's modalism. So, as far as terrible doctrine, we have um, it's against the Bible to marry outside of your own uh, race or kindred. You know, like if you're a German, you have to marry a German. Yeah, that's, that's, that's in the Bible somewhere. Um, you're a modalist, um, and anyone who disagrees with you is mentally challenged. And there is more than just that. And the, and the reason this is a big problem is because you back it up. You make videos after videos after videos on this stuff. Over and over. Refuse to be corrected. Refuse to talk to anybody or debate with anybody about it. So, what can I say, man? What can I say? You're, you're showing yourself to be a recluse who gets these squirrely ideas in your head. And you refuse, refuse to have, like, fellowship with people and discuss these topics. So, I guess, I guess Brian's a modalist. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. He's going to insist he's not. He'll make another video. Why I am not a modalist or something. Anyways, with that, we're out of here.